In this segment, we will discuss the quantity of molar mass. The quantity of molar mass is defined as the mass of one mole of a substance. We've already seen how to calculate the molar mass of an element. That was the mass of one mole of an element. But how do we determine the molar mass of a molecule? A molecule contains several elements. For instance, ethanol. Ethanol has two carbons, it has six hydrogens and one oxygen. In order to determine the molar mass of a molecule like ethanol, we have to add up the contributions of each element. One mole of ethanol contains two moles of carbon. That means that carbon contributes two times 12 grams to one mole of the compound. Because the molar mass of carbon is 12.01 gram. Six moles of hydrogen per one mole of ethanol. So six times the molar mass of hydrogen, six times 1.008, is the contribution of hydrogen to the total. One mole of oxygen per one mole of ethanol. The molar mass of oxygen of the element oxygen is 16 gram. That means one times 16 is the contribution of oxygen to the molar mass of ethanol. So if we add up all these contributions, we find a total of 46.07 grams. That means that the molar mass of ethanol is 46 0.07 grams. Now the molar mass is a very important quantity in chemistry calculations. So let me show you a couple of examples of how we can use the molar mass to do some important mass and quantity relationships. The first example concerns the molecule aspirin. Aspirin is an organic molecule. It contains carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. The molecular formula of aspirin is C9 H8 and four oxygens. Now, from this, I can calculate the molar mass. And if I know the molar mass, I can calculate how many moles of aspirin I have if I have 50 milligram of the sample. How does that work? The first step is to determine the molar mass. One mole of aspirin contains nine moles of carbon. That is nine times the molar mass of carbon, nine times 12. It contains eight moles of hydrogen. That is eight times the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1.008. It also contains four moles of oxygen per one mole of the compound. That is four times the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16 gram times four. So if we add up all these contributions, we will find the molar mass of aspirin, which is 180.16 grams. Now, knowing this molar mass, I can do a conversion. I can convert the amount in grams to the amount in moles. How does that work? Well, I use the relation that I just derived. One mole is 180.16 grams. That means I can make a unit uh, factor. A unit factor like this, where I put moles on top and grams at the bottom. And if I do that, you see that the unit of grams strikes out once I do the multiplication. So 0.05 grams, which is 50 milligrams, times this unit factor is going to be 2.8 times 10 to the minus 4 moles. I converted grams to moles by dividing the amount of the substance in grams by the molar mass of the substance. This is a very useful relationship that we will be using over and over again. Let's look at another example. This is the molecule vitamin C. Vitamin C is also an organic molecule. It contains C, H, and O. It contains six carbons, eight hydrogens, and six oxygens. Now, knowing this, I can calculate how many oxygen atoms I have if I have 5.3 micrograms of vitamin C. Again, the first step in this calculation is to determine the molar mass of the compound. I know I have six moles of carbon per one mole of the compound. Six times the molar mass of carbon, six times 12. Hydrogen, there are eight of them in the molecule. That means for each one mole, I have eight mole of hydrogen. Eight times the molar mass of hydrogen. I also have six oxygen atoms, six times the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16. If I add up all these contributions, I find a total of 
0.12 grams. That is a molar mass of vitamin C. I'm going to use this molar mass to convert the amount in grams to the amount in moles. So I want to determine how many moles of molecules do I have. 5.3 times 10 to the minus 6 is the amount in grams. Times this unit vector. Unit vector with mole on top and grams at the bottom that I just derived from this molar mass that I found. You see again that the number of grams is striking out, or the unit of grams is striking out. I get my answer in moles. The answer is 3.0 times 10 to the minus 8 moles of vitamin C. Now I know how many moles of molecules I have. But I'd like to know how many molecules do I actually have. I can find that by multiplying that with how many moles of molecules there are in one mole. So I take that number, 3.0 times 10 to the minus 8, and multiply that by how many molecules there are in a mole, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That multiplication gives me the total amount of molecules, 1.8 times 10 to the 16 molecules. The last step I have to do is to determine how many oxygen atoms I have. I know the number of molecules, and I know that each molecule has six oxygen atoms. So six times the number of molecules should give me the number of oxygen atoms in my sample. That is, 1.8 times 10 to the 16 times 6 is a total of 1.1 times 10 to the 17 oxygen atoms. Let's do one more example. In this example, I like to calculate how many carbon atoms I have in a sample of ethanol. Given that this sample of ethanol contains 2.0 times 10 to the minus 4 grams of oxygen. How does that work? First, I like to convert the number of oxygen atoms in grams given here to a number in moles. I have 2.0 times 10 to the minus 4 grams. If I divide that by the molar mass of oxygen, I find the total number of moles of oxygen. So, 2.0 times 10 to the minus 4 grams divided by 16 grams per mole equals 1.25 times 10 to the minus 5 moles of oxygen. Knowing how many moles of oxygen I have, I can determine how many moles of carbon I have. I know that for each oxygen atom, I have two carbon atoms because the molecular formula of ethanol says one oxygen for each two carbons. That means if I have 1.25 times 10 to the fifth moles of oxygen and I multiply that with the following unit factor which says two moles of carbon per one mole of oxygen. You see that the unit of mole of oxygen strikes out. So what I effectively get is the number of moles of carbon atoms. This calculation involves a multiplication by 2. 1.25 times 2 is a total of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 moles of carbon. The last step I'd like to take is to take the number of atoms of carbon in moles and find out how much the mass is of this sample of carbon. I can do that by multiplying the number of moles of carbon by the molar mass of the element carbon. That is, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 moles times the molar mass, which is 12.01 gram per mole. Again, look at the units. The unit of mole will strike out, and my new unit is grams. The result is 3.0 times 10 to the minus 4 grams of carbon. That is how many carbons I have in grams in this sample of ethanol.